Good morning, Parveen, and welcome to the Medical Defence Union. I'm particularly pleased to welcome you here as a representative of the Royal Medical Benevolent Fund because we at the MDU feel we have a great affinity with your organisation. We have great similarities. Both, I think, organisations have been here for decades. We've certainly been here for about 180 years. In particular, just for example, last year we helped 200 uh, beneficiaries uh, and gave out about £475,000. Uh, but also, we helped 40 people either remain in work or actually get back to work, and another 26 who actually we're helping retrain so they can actually uh, you know, get back to the NHS and um, you know, do their work there. Well, well, yeah. we, we, or we can help them with the medical legal problems, mm -hmm. we can support them through that process, but quite often the, the sort of things that are causing the problems are the same sort of things as you see. Absolutely. The pressures on doctors these days are enormous. Uh, not only do they start off with a debt, a huge debt that medical students have nowadays, which they've got to pay back, so the financial side is always there. The second thing is with the stress, particularly with, say, shift working. Doctors who spend their whole working life caring for patients are sometimes not very good at knowing how to ask for care themselves yeah, when they need it and that's why we see them when it, some problems say with their mental health has come up as a medical legal problem that's yeah. a symptom mm. of the illness the yeah. underlying illness and we see the other side when, when they actually come uh, we have a case committee every month where we look through all the applications and some of them are just awful. You know, they are living in dire straits. They haven't got any financial help. They may be living in, in utter poverty. Um, and really, in a way, we're kind of a proud profession. Mm. We're so keen on helping patients that we forget ourselves and forget that, you know, we have a problem. And really, I think one of the things we're trying to do is to get colleagues to see, you know, if, if their friends are all right or their colleagues are all right and somehow tell them to come to us for help. We're, of course, entirely confidential. Yes. Uh, we don't um, uh, you know, let out who, who it is. And even in the case committees, it's all totally anonymous. We can persuade doctors to mm, go along sure. to the Royal Medical Benevolent Fund when they might not have thought of doing so because they don't understand what you can do for them. So, for example, we had a, a young doctor who had been assaulted at work and hadn't been able to work because of the consequences of the mm. assault and mm. was suffering financial hardship as a result. And we were able to direct her to you and you did indeed help her mm. and made all the difference while she recovered and you helped her back to work. So it was well, invaluable. Deli delighted to hear that because that's mm. really what we're trying to do as well. Mm. But one of the other things is we do actually support the families as well. Mm -hmm. So if the doctor is you know, s so tragically uh, had a road traffic accident and can't work, uh, then we actually help the family, obviously the children if they, they need our help. Yes. And I think it's a slight problem being a, a totally voluntary donation um, uh, organisation. So we're really entirely dependent on doctors and their families and friends and so on to actually donate. Chris, wh wh what are the sort of uh, uh, problems that you face uh, in the MDU? In the last five years, we've seen the number of GMC complaints that we're dealing with mm -hmm. go up mm -hmm. by 16 percent. We've seen a big increase in the number of clinical negligence claims. We've seen a big increase in disciplinary procedures against doctors from their employers, for example. And all of this, of course, puts them under enormous stress. Mm. You know, our statistics show that now uh, 60, 70 percent are below the age of 40. Now that's very early in the life of a career for yes. a doctor. Mm. So if we lose them at that stage, we've now sort of spent all that time training them and really lost the, um, you know, in t talking in terms of the NHS, yes. uh, a lot of the workforce. And, and somehow we need to get there earlier, if only we could. Well, I, I do think it's all about awareness. I think that we have a role when we see a doctor who we think could benefit from yeah, the yeah. things that you're able to offer. I think it's easier for them to come to you because they've got a problem. Uh, I think we're looking for the people who don't think they've got a problem, but yes, have. And they don't really come up to us till really they're way down the line when, you know, it just takes that much longer 
uh, to get them back on, on, on track. If you contact us early, then we can very often preempt something which could turn into a much more difficult situation if you delay if contacting. Only you could come early. If mm. only you could come early. And I think our members have got that message because we've been saying it for 130 years. Well, if, if we can work together, I mm. think we could have a very good sort of relationship. And Absolutely. You, yeah. you sort of point out who could come. Yeah, well, I think if there's one message from both of us is that doctors are human, that misfortune can hit anyone, yeah, and that. Uh, you're there and we're there to help them.